David Brewster here with a new episode of 3 for All. This is 3 Albert Lee Licks from 1984, and I've had some requests to feature some of Albert's music. Definitely a living guitar legend, and his career started around 1959. And since that time, he's worked with everybody. You know, hundreds of session uh, appearances and guest appearances, live performances. He's released 14 studio albums under his own name, two live albums. Definitely a dynamite guitarist, full of great ideas, too. So even if you're not a country player, you can definitely pick up some new moves and licks from somebody like Albert Lee. I mean, just a phenomenal guitarist. You know, his double stop ideas, open string ideas, um, you know, string bending, uh, slap back delay effects. There's all kinds of stuff hiding in this music. So buckle up. There's some great ideas in this episode. And mainly because Albert's career goes so far back, he's worked with literally everybody, like I mentioned in the intro. I mean, people like Ricky Skaggs and Vince Gill, all the way to Eric Clapton and Steve Lukather. You know, it's very impressive to notice, you know, what he's done in his musical career. So here's an image with some of the people that Albert's worked with. Keep in mind, this is just a partial list. Totally a dynamite legend. So the licks and ideas in this episode actually came from Albert's classic Starlicks video back from 1984. And I remember when I was a kid, I was just starting to kind of play guitar. And there was a music store in the area that had, you know, instructional guitar videos. But they were so expensive. You know, I couldn't afford the $40 or $50, you know, per tape. But they also had it set up where you could rent videos. And I'm honestly not really sure if they were legally allowed to do that, but they did. And I remember going in there and it was like five bucks a day or something like that. I would go in there and rent, you know, instructional videos, checking them out, and I rented Alberts, and I had no idea who he was. And the Telecaster on the cover should have been a clue, but I just grabbed it, put it in, watched it, and I was so blown away, but also confused, because he played nothing like Van Halen or Steve Vai or, you know, players I was into at that time, but I liked it. And I remember, you know, sitting there kind of blistering my fingers trying to play some of those ideas. So anyway, the ideas in this episode came from that classic video. All right, the first idea I'm calling Honky Tonk Pull-Offs, and it's very interesting. It's hybrid-picked, and we're basically pulling off to open strings, and it's kind of outlining uh, blues progression in F, or F7, something like this. <laughs> change and then it moves to B flat 7 you know, it's really interesting and then eventually C7 so it's really interesting to notice the tonality at play and then he's doing it like that so he's basically grabbing you know this A that C and this E flat right there strings are kind of off. Definitely view those as passing tones. And then you're going to move back to this. Right, right there, you're basically pulling off that B flat and D to the open strings, the open G and open B. And then you're going to move that up a whole step to C or C7. Unusual lick, but it just grabs your attention like what the heck is that because it sounds like some funky honky-tonk The tonalities are very interesting, you know, you don't really hear or notice the root notes so much, but it's really cool I'm not gonna lie, the next two ideas are really cool and they both use delay and I'm actually using the JHS 3 Series delay because I feel you need digital delay instead of the vintage kind of echoey delay um, because you need that strong repeat, you know, really loud, something like this. <laughs> We're 
basically without the delay, it sounds like this. This is all I was doing. You know, very simple, but with the delay, you've got that crazy kind of slap back, you know, effect like this. type of effect you need to set the delay somewhere between uh, 315 to 320 milliseconds and depending on the tempo or speed you know the song you're playing you'll have to adjust that either slower or faster but that's basically that's basically the, the delay right there and then you need a very very precise and muted you know uh, technique when you play this because you don't want those notes to ring into each other like this basically choke or play those notes very staccato so you get that really cool like bounce it sounds like it's alive right there so it starts with a major right there and let's do this without the delay here like this right so that's a major and you're going to basically do that three times in a row like that. And then it's E7. Right? That D, B, and the G sharp, the E. And then go back to A major. And then right there. You start up on that A. And you're just kind of walking down on that scale. And then with the delay effect kind of choked or you know played staccato it comes to life like that and i'm always looking for like new ways to use delay and that's so cool Okay, next up are slapback double stops. And once again, we're using the exact same delay effect, but we're doing something very different. And this is so cool. It's very simple, but the effect and everything, when you hear it, it's like, what in the world is that? Because it just jumps like this. <laughs> And we're basically starting with this. Let me do this without the delay so you can kind of see what we're doing right there. Right? That's all I'm really doing right there, grabbing this A and C sharp and also that F sharp. So kind of like an A6, kind of. And then you're going to move that down a whole step. And that's all I was doing. Very simple the two notes of that double stop right there and then the third note right there and then do it again but you're doing it very staccato and choppy again and you may not really notice it but I am lifting my fingers like after I play those notes I'm hovering over the string so I'm not doing this but that is kind of what I'm doing I'm releasing those notes section you're gonna go up here kind of like an implied D6 like that and then back to the A again and then eventually when it moves to E it's kind of barring like that little you know E triad right there and then back to the A Without the delay, it sounds really, you know, kind of empty and strange, but then when you kick that delay back on and play it very staccato, it just bounces and jumps to life. I mean, it's really tough because you don't want to make a mistake. You don't want to screw up anything in there because if you do make a mistake, it's going to repeat, it's going to echo, and it's going to throw everything off. So you have to do it very precise, and that's hard.
Okay, here's a bonus lick from this footage and this instructional video, and this is really, really cool. It's basically a pedal steel bending idea that's very unusual and unorthodox, but it's so cool, which is why I'm including it here, like this. <laughs> basically an A. So let me walk through this. Um, so we're basically playing with A major, but he's doing it like that. So that's really weird because we're grabbing this B and you're bending that up a whole step to C sharp to kind of create the illusion of that A major triad, right? But you're doing it from there. Really hard, and we're also bending toward the floor instead of bending, you know, upward like a usual like blues kind of bass bend. So that's really weird. If you haven't done that before, it's going to definitely chew up your fingertips and your calluses. But what a cool sound! So there's A major, then he goes up here. There's C major, right? So you're kind of doing that D up to E, and then there's a little piece of B minor. So C major, B minor, and then back to that A major. You know, very tough lick, and like I said, it's going to chew up your fingertips, but what a cool lick to chew up your fingertips with. It's like instant country right there, really cool. That's going to wrap this episode of Three for All with three Albert Lee licks from 1984. And like I mentioned at the beginning, even if you're not a country player, you can definitely benefit from studying some country, you know, licks and ideas. And you can actually benefit from any style of music. And I can definitely, you know, claim or admit that I've learned tons of ideas from music outside of my normal kind of safe zone. You know, I kind of consider myself a rock guitarist, but I've studied blues and jazz and classical and funk and country and you know, soul and R&B and reggae, and there's tons of different styles of music that I've kind of explored and studied at least a little bit, if not a lot of it. And I love it. You know, it's kind of a challenge. It kind of shakes things up. It keeps things fresh. You know, anytime I feel like, it, you know, things are getting kind of stale or I'm kind of bored, then just completely change the direction and course you're on. And if you're always playing rock licks and rock songs, you know, play some funk or jazz or classical or whatever. And with country, it always seems like there's something very unusual and different. You know, hybrid picking, chicken picking, open strings, weird bends, you know, all kinds of stuff. Double stops and stuff. There's always something going on that's a little different than your normal, you know, rock guitarist or metal or shred guitarist. And that's exciting. It's also a big challenge, too. Like, can I do this? Or you need to sit there and kind of struggle with something and really push yourself. And that's really important too, kind of breaking new ground or kind of exposing yourself to some new ideas or directions. And that's what this is all about. So anyway, leave some feedback and comments. Please subscribe to that lessons and I'll be back before you know with more content and material. Thank you.